Goethe Canal is Sweden's construction of the millennium. It connects the Kattegat on the North Sea with the Baltic Sea. It's the main waterway through Sweden, from Gothenburg to Stockholm. A canal that ingeniously links Sweden's largest lakes. This fascinating journey begins in Sweden's second largest city. Gothenburg is a seaport that was founded in 1621 as Sweden's military and economic gateway to the world. Swedes are cheerful folk. And culture plays a major role in the life of the city's residents. The Dutch were highly influential and they arrived in Sweden in the 17th century. But Gothenburg's rapid prosperity came when the city's merchants created their own East India Company in true Dutch style, with huge trading houses. The fish market in the Fish Church attracts many visitors, and a boat trip on the canals is an atmospheric experience. With its many historic buildings, the old working-class district of Haga conveys the small-town atmosphere of former times. The hill beyond Haga is the location of the Skansen Kronen Fortress, with guns and a large tower. On Pakus Key, close to both the Maritime Centre and the Opera, the Wilhelm Tarm, on which we shall travel across Sweden, awaits us. A peaceful and contemplative journey through time with some unforgettable experiences. From Gothenburg, the Goethe Alv leads inland, at first wide, until at Lille Edet, the river narrows at the first lock. The original lock was opened in 1607 and was the first in Sweden. Here, the river has been dammed to make way for a power station. Next, the Trollharten Canal, six meters high and 82 kilometers long. Shortly before Trollharten, our first adventure begins. As the boat ascends, a masterpiece of canal design. Over a short distance, six lock systems built in a row overcome a height difference of 44 meters. One lock after the other opens up and the inflow of water raises the boat to the next level, higher and higher. Finally, we arrive at the highest lock. The water flows in evenly, and for each lock there is between 8,000 to 12,000 cubic meters of water. Then the last lock gates open. At the dock, the passengers disembark. Next, the old lock chambers are visible. They were too small to handle the traffic. The Canal Museum is reminiscent of the construction of the lock system. And how, in 1718, Christopher Polam was commissioned by Charles XII to build a canal. But with the death of the king in the same year, and a severe shortage of finance, construction was delayed for 30 years. The boat continues. Today, new technical achievements impress, such as a railway bridge whose central section can be raised from four towers. The slow-travelling boat passes much green scenery, 
with rocks alternating with meadows and forests. Warnesburg, the harbour city of Augsburg's Lahn, appears. Again, the waterway is blocked by a low-lying railway bridge, this time opening as a tilt crane. In around 1800, goods were unloaded from the ships and taken down to Trollhatten. Now the ship sets course for Lake Varna. The first day of an extraordinary journey comes to an end. On the morning of the second day, we've passed Sjertorp and are now in the Goethe Canal further west, and again traveling across country. Slowly the ship glides along, past an evergreen landscape. Idyllic meadows, fields, sheep and avenues. We reach Godhergen via two twin locks. The narrow lock chambers have little room for the Wilhelmtarm, which forces itself in. Overcoming the locks takes time. The crew works well together. The passengers walk alongside the canal from Gotthoken to Harstorp. Finally, the Wilhelm Tarm reaches the last lock. With a height difference of 10 meters, but goes ever higher. The true Goethe Canal travels from Sjertorp to Mem, a total of 190 kilometers. Next, a forest. This is a section called the Mountain Canal. We're now 91.5 meters above sea level. Next, the first hand-operated lock at Tatup. A level lock that raises the boat only 20 centimeters to the water level of the lake. From here, the canal opens into Lake Viken. The haunted sea, as it is known, can sometimes be quite windy. Leading from the lake is the Spetsnaz Canal. This is the narrowest part of the journey. Thin walls and stone signs guide the way through the solitude of the natural landscape. Until civilization is reached once again. Now, Forsvik. For generations, the religious Kindbom family has welcomed those who come here with flowers and songs, and our boat has descended 3.5 meters. Our journey leads into the Bottensjön that is connected to Lake Vatten, until we finally arrive at the port of Karlsburg. Behind the walls of Karlsborg Fortress are barracks, various buildings and a church. A truly massive structure, built in 1809 after Sweden had lost Finland to Russia. The country's defences had to be reassessed throughout the land. For the storage of the royal treasure, secure rooms were built. 
For almost 90 years, it was mostly prisoners who worked here. Finally, the fortress became a museum and included a garrison church. The journey continues eastwards. Lake Vatan is crossed from west to east. Late in the evening emerges Motala, the main village on the Goethe Canal. Despite the late hour, the famous Motala Engine Museum is open to visitors. Nostalgia in abundance surprises visitors. Television sets of past decades, radios and telephones. Shiny classic cars from various countries and numerous trademarks. So much to see in such a small space. This extensive exhibition takes everyone by surprise. On day three, the ship starts early in the morning and travels through the Motala Ström towards Lake Buran. Past factories. And then small houses and unspoiled land owned by the canal company. Soon we reach Berenschut, an important section of the canal with five lock chambers and a height of 15.3 meters to overcome. This lock brings the history of the Goethe Canal back to life. A waterway between Gothenburg and Stockholm. Since 1516, there were plans to connect the Great Lakes Vanen and Vatten with the Baltic Sea and the Kattegat. But it was not until 1810 that Baltzar von Platen convinced both King and Parliament of the need for the Goethe Canal. From 1819 to 1832, 58,000 soldiers and labourers dug the canal bed by hand. A hundred and ninety kilometers, of which less than half consists of dug canal. The lock staircase has been overcome, and our descent has succeeded without problems. At last, we're on Lake Boren. At the eastern end of the lake, the canal starts again, and the first buildings of the town of Borensberg appear. A tilting bridge for the road marks the entrance to the Burrensburg Lock, one of the last locks whose gates are opened and closed manually. Next, the famous Goethe Hotel welcomes us. The passing scenery is like something from a picture book. It's extremely tranquil as the Wilhelm Tam gradually makes its way. One of the oldest passenger ships with accommodation still in service. The ship was built in 1912. Soon after Burensburg comes the next surprise. At Kongs Norby, the canal is directed above National Highway 36. The artificial waterway is slightly higher than the lengthy Lake Norbersjön. As if in a canal, the water flows away.
The second aqueduct, the Longsbure, was found to contain a leak, so it was further strengthened with compacted earth and a thick layer of gravel. The aqueduct was a solid mass. Finally, we reach Hedda, where 15 lock chambers follow. Again, we disembark and walk along the canal. Fragrant flowers, heavenly peace, and gentle ripples of water accompany our route. Until we take a detour through meadows. Our destination is not too far away, the Vreta Monastery that was founded in around 1120. The monastery garden with its lush green colonnades hides the ancient ruins that surround the surviving main church. In 1160, the Benedictine Monastery was transformed into a first Cistercian monastery for nuns, founded by King Inga and Queen Elena. Two early Swedish kings and their relatives are buried here, and various paintings and objects are reminiscent of the long history of this holy place. Today, the monastery church belongs to the Lutheran State Church of Sweden. On the canal, the most spectacular section of the entire Goethe Canal awaits us. The Karl Johan Lock, near to the small town of Berg. The boat slowly approaches a large lock staircase and moves gingerly into the top chamber. There are often only about 20 centimeters between the boat and the wall. Seven interconnecting locks lead directly down, one after the other, to Lake Rossen. A large crowd is there, perhaps waiting for an unexpected disaster, or for a boat to rise to a total of 18.8 .8 meters. It takes about one hour, 45 minutes to lower the boat. In the penultimate lock, the enthusiastic passengers board once again. The captain carefully steers the nostalgic boat into the last lock chamber. The crew goes about its concentrated routine. Our descent is complete and we continue on the long, drawn-out Lake Rossen. Again, a natural body of water forms part of the eastern Goethe Canal, a remnant of the Ice Age. 33 meters above sea level. From Berg to Norsholm, the boat traverses the lake, mostly within sight of the tree-lined shore, which becomes increasingly inhabited. Then the canal entrance appears. Norsholm welcomes our boat as a railway swing bridge that spans the canal opens as if by magic directly in front of the next lock. Here too, a level lock was created so as to prevent the lake water from escaping. The road swings open to let us through. A short section of canal connects to the next lake. For the crew, there's always something to do with new locks to negotiate. We're nearing the next natural lake. The remotely located Halter Lock is the gateway to the small Lake Asplangen. The 3.2 meter deep bodies of water are soon crossed 
and at Snerveltop, the dugout section of the canal begins again. Again, we travel through farmland, meadows and fields, and in the twin locks of Carlsberg, we lose almost 10 meters in height. But now, night falls. We arrive at Söderkirping. Early in the morning on the fourth day, we leave Mem and the Goethe Canal. We arrive at the Baltic Sea and Slatbakken Bay. We travel along the coast of Sörmland into Himmelfjarden. And along the Södertälje Canal. In the city of Södertälje, we pass the lock of the same name and at 135 meters, the largest of our journey. Even in Viking times, this was an important trading center. The connection from the Baltic Sea to Malaren. Lake Mala is the third largest in Sweden with a variety of bays, islands and peninsulas, a labyrinth of water and land. We arrive at the small island of Björke and visit the remains of the ancient Viking city of Böcke, Sweden's first town. Today the island contains just a few reconstructed huts. It's estimated that Birka was founded in around 760 AD. Birka became an important trading center. Merchants came here from far and wide and exchanged much sought after goods. The castle hill was a natural refuge when danger threatened and the island had at times between 700 and 1,000 inhabitants. In addition to the merchants, artisans and farmers settled here too and also traded their wares. Each family had a small site. City culture was born and influenced those who lived here. In 830 AD, a young monk, Ansgar, arrived and preached the Christian gospel here. In a museum on the pier, several scenes are depicted as created by early former researchers. The last leg of our journey leads to the metropolitan area of Stockholm. A thousand years ago, the bodies of water around the island that is known today as Gamlestan were frequented by war, trade and pirate ships. They each forced their way through the narrow canal between Lake Mala and the Baltic Sea and slowly a city was created. Now we reach Hammerby Lock, the last lock of our trip. This area also provides protection for the city centre from possible high water. When the inner lock gate and the bridge open for our ship, our journey into the inner city can begin. Stockholm is called the city between the bridges because it was built on 14 islands and is characterized by water. We've now reached the end of our journey in the Venice of the North and one of the most beautiful capitals in Europe. Then everything happens quickly. The passengers leave the boat and bid a hearty farewell while harboring wonderful memories of an extraordinary journey. <laughs>